Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia News Line and Journey Top Stories. We are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 2nd of July. From Made in Bihar boots and Russian Army to UPI system, the PM Modi Lords Made in India initiative. At least 28 dead, including 10 soldiers and 2 militants attacked in Pakistan. And at least 6 people lost their lives during anti border protests in Bangladesh. posted a post by MyGov government that mentioned how local crafts are making a global impact. The Main in India initiative showcases the phenomenal success of Indian-made products globally. MyGov India report added that Made in Bihar boots are now part of the Russian Army's gear, which showcases the unexpected global reach of Indian products. It also mentioned India's UPI system is now a global phenomenon enabling seamless digital payments in multiple countries. The initiative was launched in 2014 to facilitate investment, foster innovation, build best-in-class infrastructure and make India a hub for manufacturing, design and innovation. Moving on. Pakistan military on Tuesday informed that two separate attacks by militants on an army base and a health center in northwest Pakistan killed at least 28 people, including 10 soldiers, as well as female health workers and children. Senior military officials, family and friends attended funeral prayers for the dead soldiers that were held at Banu Cantonment. The attacks, both of which occurred on Monday, coincide with the resurgence of Islamist militancy in the northwest border region with Afghanistan, which last month prompted the government to start a counterinsurgency operation in the area. In the first incident, Islamist militants attacked a military base in northwestern Pakistan, killing eight security personnel, the military said on Tuesday, after a suicide bomber rammed a vehicle loaded with explosive into a perimeter wall. The attack was claimed by the Hafiz Gul Bahadur group, which the military said operates out of neighboring Afghanistan to orchestrate acts of terrorism inside Pakistan. Islamabad says it has consistently taken up the issue of cross-border attacks with the Taliban administration, which denies allowing Afghan soil to be used for attacks. However, no group has taken responsibility for the second attack. Meanwhile, Pakistan's Foreign Minister Rishad Das said on Tuesday that the decision to impose a ban on jailed former Prime Minister Imran Khan's PTI party has not been taken yet by the federal government. Pakistan government earlier this week announced that in the view of the foreign funding case May 9 rights and the cipher episode as well as the resolution passed in the US, it has enough evidence to ban the party. Da during a press conference said that whatever decision the government will take, it would not be above the law and the constitution, nor politically motivated. The ruling party led by Shehbaz Sharif has faced a backlash following the PTI ban announcement, which was strongly opposed by its major ally in the coalition government. Khan came to power in 2018 and was ousted in 2022 after falling out with Pakistan's powerful military. Jailed since last year, Khan was acquitted along with his third wife on charges that they married unlawfully, but he will not be freed after authorities issued new orders to arrest him. And the IMF has warned Maldives against looming debt distress as the island nation looks set to borrow more from main creditor China. Since winning office last year, President Mohammad Muizu has reoriented the atoll nation away from traditional benefactor India and towards Beijing. Last month, Muizu won parliamentary elections in a landslide after promising to build thousands of apartments, reclaim more land for urban development and upgrade airports, all with Chinese funding. Without naming the archipelago's main lender, the IMF said the Maldives remained at high risk of external and overall debt distress without significant policy changes. It also urged the Maldives to urgently raise revenue, cut spending and reduce external borrowing to avoid a major economic crisis. 
The deal raised fears about Beijing's use of debt traps in exerting its influence abroad, including in the Indian Ocean. Moving on. Amid continued non-recognition of the Taliban regime by the international community, Taliban on Tuesday announced the opening of electronic ID distribution centers in Pakistan, Iran and Turkey. Since Kabul fell to Taliban in 2021, the assurance of electronic ID cards and passports at many Afghanistan diplomatic missions abroad had been halted. These efforts by the Taliban to reopen electronic ID distribution centers in neighboring countries and beyond come as no country has formally recognized Taliban's regime in Afghanistan. However, there have been exceptions such as the reopening of embassies by Iran, Pakistan, Turkey, Uzbekistan, China and Russia in Kabul, indicating nuanced diplomatic engagements despite broader reservations. Since seizing power, Taliban has imposed harsh restrictions on women and has banned them from work and education beyond sixth grade. The international community's stance remains crucial in influencing the trajectory of Afghanistan's domestic policies and its relations with the global community amidst complex geopolitical dynamics and humanitarian and human rights concerns. And at least six people, including three students, have been killed amid violent anti-quota protests in Bangladesh. Armed cadres and activists of Bangladesh ruling Awami League, along with its associated student wings, took to the streets nationwide on Tuesday to counter protesters demanding the removal of the quota system in government shops. Brandishing sticks, bats, helmets and even handguns, the cadres labeled the protesters as traitors, while concentrations occurred in multiple locations in Dhaka. Protests have intensified after Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina refused to meet the demands of these students, citing ongoing court proceedings. Since Sunday, Hasina's party supporters have gathered and confronted the demonstrators who had blocked major thoroughfares in Dhaka, demanding a revision of the government job quota system. The protesters are angry over public sector job quotas, including a 30% quota for family members of freedom fighters from the 1971 War of Independence amid high youth unemployment. These are the first significant protests against Hasina's government since she won a fourth straight term in January. Moving on. Nepal's newly elected Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli will be taking vote of confidence on Sunday, a week after taking over the charges of the office. As per the constitution, a Prime Minister is mandated to take a vote of confidence within 30 days of formal appointment over the post. Nepali President Ram Chandra Podal earlier had called the political parties in the Nepali parliament to take a claim for the Prime Minister as Pushpa Kamal Dehel lost a confidence motion. The president had called for the claim of stake as per Article 76.2 of the Constitution. On the same day, Oli had staked a claim over the post in support of the Nepali Congress. Oli and Congress President Sher Bahadur Deoba jointly signed an application for the president to appoint the UML chief, the new prime minister, on Friday, right after the results of the vote of confidence. Oli, with the backing of Nepali Congress and smaller parties on Friday, had submitted signatures of 165 lawmakers claiming majority support in the parliament. The constitution of Nepal mandates a prime minister to cross a majority of 138 in the 275 strong house of representatives to take over as the prime minister. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.